Yeah. You guys are about to get stung by Angie B. It's Angie B. It's Angie B. It's Angie B. It's Angie B. Yep, yep. It's Angie B. It's Angie B. It's Angie B. It's Angie B. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. It's Angie B. Yeah, what's that it's buzzing? Oh, yeah. It's Angie B. Oh, it's Angie B. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's Angie B. It's Angie B. your round, yellow, busy little bumblebee for Christ. And I am, ex I mean, ecstatic because it's Black History Month. And I know some of the time we think about Black history like, well, it really doesn't have anything to do with me or it's U.S. history or it, it's something that happened three, four, five hundred years ago. But as you know, in this series, this month, we've been featuring black history segments that have to do with our own family, the history that we grew up with, the stories that our grandmamas and them told us about. And, and we're really just trying to show how these stories have helped us to become the men and women of God. These stories have helped us to become entrepreneurs and mothers and fathers how these stories have allowed us to become the people that we are today. And so, in today's episode of NGB Presents, powered by Uvu, I want to introduce you guys to my, my good buddy in Christ. I want to introduce you to Elder Sabia Seabrooks. She is just a, a blessing in my life. She's my friend. She's my confidant. She's my mentor. And she has a story that she'd like to share with each of you about someone in her family. So, hey, Sabia, how you doing, honey? Hello. Hello. I'm blessed. How are you? I, I'm wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. And you look extraordinary today. You, did. Well, thank <laughs> you look you. fabulous. Thank you. I feel extraordinary today. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Extraordinary. I thank you for taking time to not only do the research, but to share your story with us today because I, I know you're busy with ministry. I, I know you're busy with your business and, and everything, but I think this was important. We, we, we're leaving something for your grandkids. We're leaving something for my nieces and my nephew. We're, we're leaving something for the next generation. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, tell me how you heard about this person that you're going to teach us about today. Well, I knew he was my great-great-great-grandfather, wow. but I didn't really know a whole lot about him, um, like what I'm going to, you know, kind of read to you today. Wow. But uh, my cousin did a family tree, and that kind of brought things up, but I still didn't get all the information I wanted. But I think this is enough to wet your palate. Good, good, good. And, um... Yeah, yeah. I think this will be enough to wet your palate. So, shall I go ahead and tell you about oh, it? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. All right, all right. In 1867, Mr. L.B.T. Jackson, who was my great-great-grandfather, along with seven other black men, mm -hmm. headed by Bishop Richard Harvey Kane, became dissatisfied with the treatment they were receiving in Charlestown, South Carolina, which is now called Charleston, South wow. Carolina. Wow. They took a ride on the South Carolina Special, which was the local train, looking for sites that the South Carolina Railroad Company had for sale. They signed a contract with the South Carolina Railroad Company to buy 620 acres of land. Mm -hmm. After they paid the debt, they applied to the Secretary of State for a charter. The charter was granted on December 14, 1889. <laughs> Mr. Ellaby T. Jackson, founder, became the richest black man in South Carolina. Oh, he and the others founded what they named the town Lincolnville, South Carolina, in honor of President Abraham Lincoln, who freed the slaves. Oh, my goodness. The founders in the early settlers were strong believers in God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. They were members of Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. On November the 6th, 1869, 
they signed the deed for the purchase of land for the first church in their village. And that's my story about mm -hmm. Mr. Ella B. T. Jackson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I know we talked about this a little bit before we got started, but the thing that stuck out to me first was that you said they paid off a debt. That That's, yes. that's honorable. That's showing yes, honor and, and respect. I, I appreciate that. How many of us, you know, are in credit card debt or some other kind of debt because we borrowed something and then something else became more important than repaying the debt? The first thing they did was paid off the debt. It's like they had a vision. Yeah. You know, they had a vision and they stuck to it. They were uni in unity. Black people need to be in unity to get <laughs> things done. Yes. Come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and I saw that too, and I was like, wow. Yeah. They took 620 acres of land owned wow. by black people. Wow, yeah. wow. So we have a lot to be proud of. And then you said that, that they named it after a president. They named it right. after a leader. They gave homage and respect to a leader, you know? Right. Um that that was important to them. That that, that was important to them. Right, absolutely. I, I, I appreciate that. And then And the town is still there today. <laughs> yeah, the town is still there today. That's incredible. But I like the fact that they did the first church. They said, Hey, we gotta get a church going on here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They knew how important that was. They believed so strongly in God. So yeah. I think that's powerful. Because if you think back, um, and I give shout out to Roy Evans from, from the Jericho Broadcast Network. He always talks about the, the Renaissance era. And that was a time when black people didn't go outside of their neighborhood for products and services. There was the black barber, the, the black shoemaker, the black dressmaker. Mm -hmm. And our neighborhoods were strong and economically sound because we kept the money in the family. Now we've got right. statistics about how the the the, the African American dollar is is so enormous, but it doesn't stay in our community. It goes outside of our community, and I I like the part that you said where, where you said they they work together, and he became like the richest man, <laughs> richest man. <laughs> That's what happens when you keep the money in the family. You and yours is is blaming. You know. What I mean? Oh, yes, just, yes, yes. oh that's wonderful. And to know that you come from the foundation of entrepreneurship and ministry. And yeah. look at you well, now. Look, it look read at me, you. didn't it? Look at, look, look at you now. Look at you read now. Me. I've got to just brag oh on God. you a little bit. Everybody, um, my friend Sabia is is the founder and facilitator of of a ministry in Orlando, Florida, entitled Women Without Walls, and um, she tearing down walls. Oh, no, sorry, did I say without? I'm, 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 yeah, we're going to see women without walls. Is women tearing down walls? Yeah. We're tearing them down. We're tearing them down. There we are. And for your five year anniversary, you allowed me to come in and share a word with the Lord for, for the women. And um, I, I appreciated that. But what I always respected about you and the ministry was that you said you wanted it to be a, a safe place for women to come and get comfortable and share their pain and their stories and snatch off their wigs if they need to and just be together. And, and, and that must have come from this great, great, great grandfather. Because yeah. you said he yeah. worked with other people. To, to, yeah. to become strong and powerful. So I thank you for that. I, I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then on top of everything else, you're a, a business owner. So I, I wanted to give you some time to, to tell us about this, this, this product and the new business that, that, that you have um, and how people can get in touch with you. So tell me, what's the name of the product? Well, great. Well, thank you. The company, first of all, is called Genesis Global, and the company's only five years old, but it has just skyrocketed. It manufactured the product here in America, but it took it overseas, 
and the sales have just skyrocketed, skyrocketed. So they have over 110 countries now that use the Luminous Youth Enhancement System. Mm. And it, I mean, it just, it just took off. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's smart. That's yeah. smart. So anyway, they came back and introduced it to the U.S. market and brought along a new project. And the project is called Instantly Ageless. Mm. Instantly Ageless is a micro cream that you can put on your under eye, on your anywhere there's wrinkles, fine lines, dark circles, and it works within two minutes. Mm, I'm looking this at my face to try to find under the bus. Oh, <laughs> you know, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I got it's a beautiful you. skin. I got you. <laughs> but I tell you, when you have rough nights, you may want to have a little of this. Wow. But anyway, so it's come along. It has jumped right off the hook. It has um, this December. They, I think they brought it in on November. In December, their sales was $460 million. Wow. Just in this product alone. Must be doing so something right. People are now, I mean, the distributors are happy, happy, happy. And I'm mm-hmm. going to be a happy distributor, too, because it's mm-hmm. starting to take off for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this product is just absolutely wonderful. I also have another line. Um, the whole system is called Luminous. And everybody should have a regimen for their skin, yes. whether they need it or not, because your skin is going to age whether you want it to or not. And Luminous has everything from a serum, which is marvelous, moisturizing cream. Um, we have a, a night cream. We have a, a useful cleanser. It's just really great, really great. So I'm excited about it. Um, it's something if you want to, if you're interested in it, you can reach me at 407-808-2713. Um, let me give you this website address. Make sure you have a pen and um, pad handy. It's www.agelessbeauty411.com. And then we're going to put in Genesis Global. Genesis is spelled J E U N E S S. You got that? All right. Global, G-L-O-B-A-L. Dot com? So, no, dot com. So it's www.agelessbeauty411 dot genisglobal dot com. Oh. Um, my email address is agelessbeauty411 at gmail. Okay, so, but this is what I want to leave with everybody. Okay. You got to see the video. Oh, the video is phenomenal. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It's, it's less than two minutes. Anybody can take that much time. Just go to this and just go to two, the number two, minute, skinmiracle.com. So it's two minute, skinmiracle.com. All right. There's only two minutes. SkinMiracle.com. You've got to see this. It will just blow you away. Really? And it caught my attention. And then when I looked and, and found out more about the company, then I said, oh, my gosh, I, this is something I need to do. Not only to help people to look better and feel better about themselves, but to also to help my bank account because it needs help. <laughs> Because we need to be the wealthiest people like your great, 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 grandfather. Yeah, like my great, great, great granddaddy. That's right. <laughs> yes, and I'll give you some more information if you call. There's going to be a call tonight. It's um, every Monday and Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock. There is a webinar and conference call. And if you just shoot me an email or whatever, I'll be glad to give it to you. If you're looking for a business, this is the one you want to get with. It's up yeah. and running. Good. Thank you so much, Angie. I so appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for being one of my ministry partners on the tour. I I remember the the first time I asked you to be a mom with the moms in ministry and to share your testimony and and you've come back and and as you know the tour has grown. We started out doing uh, holy hip hop concerts 
and testimonies from the rappers. And now we've yeah. grown to actually, can, can you believe we have six workshops, Sabia? We have six workshops. Wow. We've got the Moms in Ministry that, that you're a part of. We've got the career workshop that you're a part of, because now people can hear more about the, the, the products and services you have to offer. We've got the dads on duty, where we put the men over in their man cave, and, and they talk. Man cave. I know, I know. We've still got testimonies of a rapper. We've got the new God, Me, and You workshop, where married couples will share their testimony about how God brought them together in spite of themselves. Because I was not Bartee's type, and Bar and I was not looking for Bartee, and look, <laughs> look what God was look doing. God. <laughs> and glory be, glory be. <laughs> and so married couples wow. will be sharing their testimonies. And then um, the brand new, brand new workshop that actually will debut during Black History Month is Can You Hear Me? I'm Hurting. And that one is for the teens and young adults who deal with or have a relative that's dealing with mental illness, sexual abuse, bipolar, depression, um, uh, all sorts of things that young people mm -hmm. deal with today that I, I don't think we dealt with when we were their age. And mm -hmm. and now we've got issues that, that we're growing we up with. Didn't have a name for it. Didn't, didn't have a name, have a name for, it. for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our great, great, great grandparents just kind of didn't talk about it, kind of prayed mm -hmm. over it and figured it would go away. Right. And and a lot of our our ancestors grew up dysfunction. Um, yeah. I, I I found a statistic that said eight out of ten adults that choose to have weight loss surgery because they're obese um, have admitted to eating as a result of sexual abuse as a child. So really? eight out of ten adults wow. were sexually abused, and the only way they knew how to deal with it was to eat to such an enormous capacity that now they're adults and they need bypass surgery to heal diabetes, sleep apnea, high blood pressure, all the wow. things that come wow. with obesity. When the storms of life are raging, sometimes we have to be broken down so that we can be rebuilt into what we're actually meant to be. When the struggle to climb becomes just too heavy and when God's voice becomes silent in your ear. Just hold on because a queen is about to emerge. The new book by the Queen Bee is entitled Last Week I Wanted to Die, published by True Soul Publishing, an umbrella for survivors. The revealing story of suicide, pain, and depression. The Queen Bee, Angie B, has emerged as a business owner, ministry leader, and a faithful child. Of God. This story is just the beginning. Last week I wanted to die. On sale now at thequeenbee.com. Want to learn how to pray effectively? Discover for yourself a strategy for establishing the promises of God in your life. Charlene C. Thomas is a published author, inspirational speaker, and professional editor. But above all, she is a trained intercessor. As the founder of Sword of the Spirit Ministries, Charlene has created Take Up Thy Sword a monthly newsletter with hope and encouragement from the Bible. This newsletter led to the devotional and journals entitled Prayer Plus Encouragement Equals Power. 
In 2013, Charlene was named Author of the Year at the Orlando Newsom Awards, and she has written three books thus far in an ongoing series of prayer guides. Her newest release, I See What You're Saying, follows When Heaven Hears Your Prayer and How Great Is Your Faith. You can find all of these anointed products and much more at TakeUpThySword.com and other online retailers such as Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Books A Million. If you need help with resumes, proofreading, or book publishing, these services are also available via Spirit of Excellence Writing and Editing. Contact Charlene directly at 321-209-2309 with any questions or comments. That's 321-209-2309. Remember, God heard your prayer. Now you need to learn how to get the answer. Hey there, family. We're back with uh, today's episode of Angie B Presents, powered by Ubu. Thanks to Ubu for providing this technology because I get to sit down with business leaders, ministry owners, and people that make me smile, even if I'm in Daytona Beach and they're in Orlando or someplace else. So uh, we are very, very grateful for Ubu. But uh, before our break, we were talking about uh, Sabia and how she's a part of the tour that NGB presents. And you shared your testimony through the Moms in Ministry workshops. And uh, you've also introduced your, your products and services through our career workshop. Um, I, I, have, I have accidentally called Sabia a drama queen when really I should call her the queen of uh, artistic abilities. I think that's more of what I should call you, Sabia. <laughs> Because you write these beautiful plays and stage presentations, and God allows you to be uh, poetic. He gives you these gorgeous poems, and uh, I'm just thrilled by that artistic ability within you. So, Sabia, if, if you don't mind, could you share a poem with us before we go? <laughs> Old Lincolnville by Frank Dunn. The last bugle has sounded at the ending of the war, where men of North and South had fought with honor and with valor. Now brothers were united, and slavery's chains were free. A new birth of our country, blessed by God's own creed. Seven men of color had a dream, where men could live and toil. Among the stately pines that stand, enriched and fertile, Soil. soil that has been nurtured by those who fought and died. Oh, Lincolnville, oh, Lincolnville, what heritage, what pride. Many years have come and gone, and generations past have left for us a legacy that'll never be surpassed. Black and white, rich and poor, will live in harmony, ordained by God in heaven above that all men should be free. Lincolnville, oh Lincolnville, blessed by God's own hand, long may you live in peace and love throughout your hallowed land. Love for all your neighbors, in spite of race and color, a place where all men can be free and live in peace once more. Thank you. When the storms of life are raging, sometimes we have to be broken down so that we can be rebuilt into what we're actually meant to be. When the struggle to climb becomes just too heavy, and when God's voice becomes silent in your ear, just 
hold on because a queen is about to emerge. The new book by the Queen Bee is entitled Last Week I Wanted to Die, published by True Soul Publishing, an umbrella for survivors. The revealing story of suicide, pain, and depression. The Queen Bee, Angie B, has emerged as a business owner, ministry leader, and a faithful child of God. This story is just the beginning. Last week I wanted to die. On sale now at thequeenbee.com. You hear that? You hear that? Hey there, family. It's your girl, Angie B., your host of the hottest home hotspot worldwide. And Angie B. is proud to present the concert that you don't want to miss. Y'all get ready, cause we coming. 